Good afternoon all my dear students. Hope you all are staying at home and uh, keeping good health in this present situation of health emergency. Today we are going to read a poem called The Vagabond from the textbook Blossoms. This one. Lesson number uh, 6. The Vagabond from Blossoms. Okay. The poem, The Vagabond, written by Robert Louis Stevenson, is a lovely poem that emphasizes the unrestrained joys of an independent vagabond's life in the outdoors on the lap of nature. But before starting the poem, I would like to give you a short biographical sketch about the poet. Robert Louis Stevenson was born on 13th November 1850 at Edinburgh in Scotland and died on 3rd December. 1894 at Wailima, Samoa at the age of 44. He was a Scottish novelist, poet, essayist and even author of so many travelogues who contributed several classics to children's literature. He was most noted for Treasure Island, Kidnapped, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and the child's garden of verses. Now, the present poem, The Vagabond, depicts the joys and happiness of a vagabond's carefree life in the open air on the lap of nature. Now, who is a vagabond? Or what does the word vagabond actually mean? Literally, a vagabond is a person who has no particular home. And who wanders or travels from place to place in search of the life he wants. A carefree, completely carefree life. In this poem, the poet depicts the carefree life of a man who wants nothing of the pleasures of this world. Neither wealth, nor love, nor hope, nor friendship. Nothing. He only wants the open sky above his head and the road below him so that he may travel on without any care for the comforts of life. Nothing can subdue his spirit of walking. In this context, I would like to give you a little information about the poet. Stevenson was a great walker himself as he had been suffering from chronic lung disease, he made frequent journeys himself in search of good health to many parts of the world. And finally, he settled at Samoa where he breathed his lust. From this information, you may relate the life of a vagabond to the life of the poet. Now, we will go through the poem. I will read it aloud and discuss each and every line. Give to me the life I love, let the lave go by me, give the jolly heaven above and the byway nigh me. Here, the poet in the guise of vagabond asks or appeals the Almighty to give him the life that he loves, a carefree life in the open air. Oh God, give me the simple life that I love, like that. Let the lab go by me. What does lab means? Lab means rest. Rest of the life. Accept simple, carefree life, whatever else is there. So here the poet says that, give to me a simple life I love and the rest of the life, the rest of the comforts of the world must go by. The poet or the vagabond doesn't want anything else except a simple carefree life. He doesn't want a comfortable life at all. Give the jolly heaven above and the byway nigh me. Jolly means happy, heaven denotes sky. Byway means a sideway, not the main road or the highway. It's a road less traveled by people. And nigh means near. So the poet here wants a happy, radiant, 
sky above his head and a side way right at hand near to him that will be less troubled by people so that he can travel carefully from one landscape to another seeing enjoying new places in the company of nature bed in the bush with stars to see bread i deep in the river there's the life for a man like me there's the life forever so here the poet as he as the vagabond or the poet here wants a simple life he doesn't want a comfortable bed at all whenever he will uh, be on the lap of nature he will sleep in the nature's natural bed in the bush from where he can see the stars at night bread i deep in the river for food he needs nothing but bread that he will dip in the fresh cool river instead of in a cup of coffee or tea literally it denotes the poet's wish of having simple food only he only wants this kind of life of a wanderer wandering or traveling through the landscapes experiencing the satisfaction of seeing new places and this kind of life suits him better he doesn't want any comforts of this world any comfortable life is not desired by him now in the second stanza the poet says let the blow fall soon or late let what will be over me give the face of earth around and the road before me let the blow what does the word blow means blow means misfortune challenges of life troubles or it may denote death so the poet says that or the vagabond says that let uh, the death or the blow of death or the blow of misfortune challenges of life fall on me fall on fall on the poet fall on the vagabond sooner or later whatever will be will be he doesn't bother at all but whatever he needs is the face of the earth around him not the boundary of four walls and the road beneath his feet not a comfortable persian carpet but the rough road only all he seeks is the happy radiant sky above his head and a rough road below him so that he can travel and he can enjoy his life traveling from one place to another in the company of nature okay wealth i seek not hope nor love nor a friend to know me all i seek the heaven above and the road below me he makes it clear that that he doesn't seek wealth nor hope nor love nor any friend to know him actually he wants to avoid completely all human associations all human company all that he wants to do is to travel and to travel from one place to another without any restraint whatsoever not concerned about the wealth or the weather or anything else around him and to do so he seeks the sky above and the road below him he is not afraid of death at all he he knows that that he will die soon or later but still he wants such a life on the road in the company of nature completely carefree life free from all human association in the third stanza the poet says or let autumn fall on me where afield i linger silencing the bird 